Hey folks and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. Ever since the Honda Ridgeline here was introduced, it's been an anomaly in the truck market. It's a unibody front wheel drive pickup truck. So we've compared it to other midsizers, but it was never exactly an apples to apples comparison. But now we have what has to be the closest competitor that has ever existed to this truck, and it's right here. That's the 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz, and you know we're gonna compare them. So in this video, we'll show you all the features, we'll go in the interiors, and then we're gonna look at the beds, and we're gonna try to load an ATV into these trucks to see if it fits. Let's start by talking about what powers these two small trucks. And here in Canada anyways, these are the only options you can get under the hood of both of these. So with the Ridgeline, we have a naturally aspirated three and a half liter V6 that makes 280 horsepower and 262 pound feet of torque sent through a nine speed automatic transmission. Of course, this is front wheel drive based, but it does have standard all wheel drive here in Canada. Now talking about the Santa Cruz, this is a two and a half liter turbocharged four cylinder. And yes, it makes more power than the Honda. 281 horsepower and 311 pound feet of torque. So smaller engine, but it's got that turbo on there and it is making more power. And it is sent through an eight speed dual clutch transmission. So there's no doubt that these two brands took different approaches to the powertrains. The power numbers here are similar, but you know what? The towing and payload are almost the exact same. Tow rating on both of these maxes out at 5,000 pounds. And when it comes to payload, our Honda here has just a little bit more. According to the Door Jam sticker, 1,477 pounds versus 1,411. It's awesome that these two small trucks have such big payload ratings. We've had a ton of half tons lately that do not meet those payload numbers. So it's nice that in these small trucks, you're getting that big payload. We interrupt this exciting Truck King review with some even more exciting news. We have teamed up with the folks over at Ronin Factory to give you guys a chance to win this wide body Ford Raptor. It has 17 inch method race wheels, 40 inch tires, and a whole bunch of other aftermarket upgrades. It looks like an absolute monster. The way this works is you visit Ronin Factory's website and you buy something. They sell all kinds of accessories for your ride, bullet antennas, car cleaning products, clothing, and even coffee. Now, once you buy something, those dollars become entries. So you're automatically entered to win this beast of a Ford Raptor. And maybe the best part, Ronin Factory teams up with a charity for all of its giveaways. In this case, it is Freedom Service Dogs of America. So if you're looking for some super cool new accessories for your truck, buy them from Ronin Factory, be entered to win the Raptor, and help out these amazing service dogs. That sounds like a win-win in my books. Don't forget to hit the link below in the description to check out their website. And now, back to our originally scheduled video. The next big question you might have is what is the size difference? And yes, when you stand next to the trucks in the real world, the Ridgeline feels a tick bigger and the numbers back that up. Here are all the numbers so you can compare them yourselves. But like I just mentioned, when you're just standing next to them, the Ridgeline feels just a little bit taller than the Santa Cruz does and it's just a hair longer. But you know what, come back to the bed with me because this is really wanna, where I wanna show off uh, the difference in utility. So here on the Santa Cruz, what I really like is the bed height. It's, you know, not even quite chest height. I can reach in here almost to the middle of the bed and have my hand down. Over here on the Honda, it's a little higher. You can feel that. However, I can still reach in. And this is one of the big differences I noticed right away. The bed here on the Honda is shallower than the bed on the Hyundai. And that's very interesting and I'll show you why. So one of the cool features both of these trucks have, an in-bed trunk. So if you open the Hyundai's trunk, take a look. This is not very shallow at all. You know, barely halfway up my forearm there. This is, it's nice to have, but you're not getting a lot of stuff into this trunk. Whereas, let's take a look at this ridge line. We drop this trunk, or open it I should say. Look how deep this trunk is. It's almost my entire arm, it's ridiculous. Plus, the Honda puts its spare tire up there hidden away, which is nice because it's out of the elements. The Hyundai has a spare, but it's down underneath. 
like our traditional pickups. So there are definitely some clear differences back here in the beds. And uh, you know what, rather than just give you the numbers for size, let's go get our ATV and try to load it up and see what happens. All right, time to load up the ATV and I'll do a little Truck King safety tip. Uh, you always want to strap your ATV ramps onto your truck. Otherwise they can fly out from underneath you. The best way to do it, well, is to get your strap set up first, but the best way to do it is to go from right around the middle of your ramp there and to go down to the hitch. And you can go right onto the safety chain connectors on your hitch, and then your strap is entirely out of the way, and it's also keeping downward pressure onto your ramp. Like a so. All right, time to load this ATV up. I did measure the rear of the Santa Cruz. It's 49 inches wide at its skinniest, and this ATV is 48 inches. So it should go in, but let's see how it works out. Touching the wheel wells now, yeah. and now it's going to want to climb the wells. And it doesn't matter Our back wheels are in the air. If it wasn't for that ramp, we would not be in the bed. Okay. Well, you know what? If that tonneau cover wasn't there too, it might do it, but... If the tonneau cover wasn't there, you'd be on. Okay. Coming down, everybody. She ain't going to go. Nice try. All right, now time for the ridge line. Based on just eyeballing it, it's gonna fit here. Let's find out. That's okay. Yeah. Towards me a little bit right. Okay. Pretty much there, yeah? Yeah. Well, you know what? It is in. You're not going to get that tailgate up, but you can put an ATV into a, a ridge line. And obviously, the tonneau cover played a big uh, part in this, but I also didn't have to run up on the wheel wells here in the ridge line, which was nice too. And that was happening in the Hyundai. So that little bit of extra width is definitely appreciated. Uh, and yeah, straight up, it's just a little bit easier to put an ATV into this Honda than it was into that Hyundai. Audio 375, audio 375. Thanks. Dad hit Steve in the back of the head, audio 375. Just hope there was a bug there. There was a bug. Okay. Well, folks, you saw it there. I think that our Kodiak would have fit if we didn't have this tonneau cover up here. And I'll mention, this is standard for all Canadians. Um, it's removable though, so you could take this off of here. We're not doing that today. Uh, so, you know, it's good to know you could take it off, but you just have to know if you want the tonneau, it's gonna eat up this front foot of your bed and some things, yeah, it's not gonna work out. Grab that tape measure. How much exactly does it eat up? Let's, sure. let's give them what they want. Dad, right behind you. It's on the ridge line. Let's give them exactly what they want. How much are you losing with that tonneau cover? Uh, I'm gonna say it's 11 inches. It's one foot exactly. Oh, there you go. It's a foot exactly. So yeah, the front yeah. foot of your bed is done. It's, I love the tonneau. It does keep things dry and makes it like a trunk in here, but not for big things like an ATV. Let's take a look inside these two now. And I do have to say that, you know, kind of right off the bat, the interiors are quite similar. Um, really going with a lot of this piano black, kind of a dark theme. One thing that stands out here in the Santa Cruz, there is a fully digital gauge cluster. The Honda does not have that. Uh, one thing that I absolutely can't stand in this Santa Cruz is that there's no physical buttons over here. It's all a touch screen, especially the volume. I wish I had a volume knob. Honda made that mistake, but then they brought the volume knob back and Hyundai made that mistake here too. Uh, but overall, you know, I like both interiors. Now though, I want to talk more about the size in here. Santa Cruz is a small vehicle, but I have no issues. I've been driving this thing for quite a few weeks now. I'm comfortable in this small truck, even with my monster baby seats behind me. Let me show you the back seat. 
So yes, I am a dad of three now actually, but I have my two big baby seats in here right now. Um, here's what I want to point out. For forward facing baby seats, there is a top tether location in the both sides and in the middle. And if you can see it here, it's just this little plastic piece that opens up and there's a hook right there. So, you know, when you're dealing with half tons and big heavy duties, you have to use those redirect loops. Those are annoying. This has nice top tethers all the way across. But one thing to note, the Santa Cruz here only has two latch positions. So there's latch on this side and latch on that side, but there is no latch positions in this center seat. So this is as many baby seats as you're gonna get back here. And you're not gonna get a rear facing baby seat in that center using latch. Now we're here in the ridge line, and what I said before holds true. A lot of that black piano black, kind of a dark theme. I mean, this is the black edition after all. Um, but yeah, the interiors here, they're pretty similar. And like I mentioned, I do like them both. Now, size wise, the ridge line does feel a little bit bigger, a little bit wider. Um, but as in terms of my driving position, I don't know. I don't think I'm more comfortable in one over the other. I think where the big difference is going to be is in the back seat. So once again, let's go check it out. And this time we're gonna start a little bit differently. I need to show you how you install a forward facing car seat because on the Hyundai, you had your tethers up here behind the seat. You just hooked your top tether on and that was it. Here on the Honda, these top tether hooks up here are, it's, it's called a redirect. So this is a redirect loop, which over down here, you actually hook this tether onto. So you can see, I'll show you under the seat here, there's the hook. That is the hook you're using for your top tether uh, on the outside position positions and it's redirected up there you make sure your strap is not twisted at all and uh, bada bing bada boom and then you tighten her up so definitely more oops well that was not hooked up properly but I'll make sure it is definitely a more involved process hooking up a front facing child seat but I do have to point something else out I have more space in this rear seat which is nice and there is a latch position in the center so this has three latch positions the Hyundai only has two now let's talk about actually driving these two. You've already seen the numbers and you know they're really similar and that translates over into how they drive. They drive small. Both of these vehicles feel at home, you know, downtown in the city and in tight parking lots. And I think that's really what both of these brands were going for. They don't want that big truck feeling. They want it to feel like a compact and, and they both really do. Now, what I wanna really talk about though is towing and then a bit of off-roading. So we've towed with both of them. We did 5,000 pounds. We did a max tow test here on the Ridgeline. With the Santa Cruz, sadly, we don't have the seven pin hookup just yet. We'll get a Santa Cruz with one later. But for now, all we could tow was our pontoon boat, 2,500 pounds. And I gotta say, I like the power out of the Hyundai more than I like the power out of the Honda. So yeah, the turbo here just really stands out when you put your foot into it while towing. Now, dynamically, they both feel really good. I mean, with that pontoon boat getting pushed around by the wind, we didn't really feel the truck getting jerked around all that much. Same goes for the Ridgeline over here. So if I had to pick a tow vehicle, I might actually lean towards the Santa Cruz just because you're getting all of that great torque under the hood. Now, the next thing we did with both of these, we took them to our local unmaintained county road to do some light off-roading. These aren't hardcore, so we just want to test the all-wheel drive. Um, once again, love the dimensions, dimensions of both of these trucks out there on that trail. They feel small and compact. Uh, Suspension-wise, yeah, there's not a ton of travel here. They're both a little bit stiff once you get out there. But if you're trying to get to the adventure, we always like to say, to the trailhead, to where you're going to launch your canoes or kayaks or take your bikes, these are both great options. And if you want to see exactly how the all-wheel drive performed in our twist ditch, you can see it right here back to back. All right, let's see. No problem though, absolutely it's nothing. Locked. It set the power basically the second it needed to. Nice. So you're gonna see the rear end lift. Oh, there it is. It is working. It's trying to break and send the power. Yes. So 
I think the boys have done a really good job today of showing you the comparison between our Santa Cruz and the Ridgeline. But, you know, I decided I wanted to say something because just recently we also compared Santa Cruz to an F-150 we had. Well, there were those who got it, but there was an awful lot of people who kept telling us they were apples and oranges. I just want to tell you, they may have been apples and oranges, but they were both fruit. And that's the point. These are trucks. And the interesting thing here today is the guys are looking at how useful these trucks are, how will these trucks fit your lifestyle. But what I'm excited about is that we have a compact market. It is coming back. The Ridgeline was an outlier. The Ridgeline was, you know, 14 years ago, nobody saw it coming and couldn't quite figure out what to do with it or what it was. One of the reasons that it's been getting a lot of grief over the last decade. However, we've got the Santa Cruz now. And if you're the guy who goes, well, Honda, Hyundai, who cares? I'm sorry, Ford has built the Maverick. Ford is the gorilla. Ford does not get into the compact truck market unless they expect this thing to give us big numbers. So we expect now to see things come from Ram. Certainly we're going to see things from GM. So you know what? Don't tell us these aren't trucks. Save your keystrokes. Trust me, this is just another flavor in the 57 flavors of the truck world. Well, folks, we are coming to the end of this one, which means I gotta pick one of these two trucks, and it is a tough choice. The Ridgeline here has kind of been the outlier for such a long time now. It's been in a category of one for a while, but we could never really quite compare it straight up with anything. And now we have the Hyundai. And you know what, bringing it here today and driving them both, I find myself liking the Santa Cruz more. If you're gonna build a compact pickup truck, well, make it compact but then make it work hard. And that's what Hyundai has done here. Plus it's got that great turbocharged powertrain. Yeah, I find myself leaning towards this Hyundai over that Honda. But of course, now I want to hear what you think. So please go in the comments, tell me why I'm wrong and why you'd buy that Ridgeline. While you're down there, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member of the channel, and then come right back here to Truck King to see what we're testing next. See ya.